this is starting off and they want to scale pretty aggressively. So the very first thing, I'm going to make the assumption that 95% of their data is wrong or I'm not going to judge it off the old account performance. I'm going to judge it based off what I have from the day forward. So in a situation like that, the very first thing that I do is take all their budget and toss it into standard shopping to see how well their business reacts to cold traffic. Now that tells me mostly how well their brand is recognized and what people think of their brand. So if I have a cold traffic campaign, which is this one here, converting, let me just filter this out, honestly. If I have a cold traffic campaign like here, that's converting at a 1.35% or something like soap, 2% or like some of these are converting at, I mean, not bad percentages, pretty good e-commerce conversion rates if you ask me, right? To me, that means that it's a product people want, it's a product people like, it's a brand people like. There's some form of awareness, for some reason, people like buying their products. Now, for now, it's a matter of figuring out how I'm gonna scale this, right? So first step, figure out how well the brands react to cold traffic. In this case, this is soaps. If anyone ever posts this, this one, you gotta blur everything out because I don't even know if we're allowed to talk about this client online, but blur everything out. But um, so the first step is to identify how well the brand, brand reacts to cold. It tells me how good their brand is, how good their website is, how good their landers is, how good their customer customers are. If it's even a viable market, how scalable that account is. So it tells you a lot of things right off the bat. So in this situation, it's reacting really well. So just for context, I don't know, let's go 60 days. This is a brand new account. Go ahead, Dean. At this point, have you made any sort of like title optimizations or any Nothing. feed optimizations? Okay. Nothing. So <clears throat> let's. this is where I started the account here. This is a brand new account, by the way. So it started manual, 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 got my conversion data. And right here, I think it was this week, right here is when I put T. Roaz on this campaign, switch it over from manual to T. Roaz. So I've got enough data on the account, T. Roaz and spike, spike, spike. The last two weeks has just been going uphill for me, which is really good. We did a budget increase pretty much, I think it was like two, six, let's just go look when we did these things, right? To see how things adjusted. So budget increase was done and you got to measure how different scenarios or different changes affects the campaign. So we had a budget increase from 280 to 600. So remember that, that was done on the second. And then the bidding change. When did I make the change? Show details. Then this was done on the 24th. Okay, so remember these two dates. So let's just say th this week. So when we're making a change, you wanna make sure you scale accordingly. So we had a budget increase and a change in bid strategy. If my cost stayed consistent and my conversions, the number of conversions of the people that are buying from me didn't go up along with my increase in cost, like it is consistently going up right now, that would have been bad. If my cost graph was something like, let's just pretend this is our cost in line, right? And and I'm gonna go, and this is my conversion line like this. It's still going up, but in a less slower pace than it is here. That's bad for me, because if it looks bad here, chances are backend metrics aren't as accurate either. So they're gonna, it's not affecting growth as much. You want things to be in line. So if you increase spend by, I don't know, 30%, you want backend metrics, your conversions in Google kind of to align with a 30% increase overall. Does everyone follow that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, nice. So once I know that this is scalable, kind of scalable, I start pushing budget into the shopping campaigns to whatever extremes I can. Right now, we're at $600 a day. This is probably going to sit at $600 a day, regardless of what anyone says, for probably till the end of the month. Three to four weeks is roughly where I like to keep it at a consistent state, where until it either fully stops increasing, like this is still in an upward trend to me, until it hits a wall in terms of how many new customers I can get with my set budget, or it just stops getting better, basically. But three to four weeks is usually what it takes for it to hit that consistency. And then I just start increasing budgets more. And right now, Google is saying I can increase budget from 600 to 1800 without 
affecting my cost per conversion. Of course, I won't increase it that much. Realistically, this was probably go from 600 to maybe a thousand if I wanted to next time, right? It's just a guesstimate of how, how risky you are. I've done double increases, I've done triple. It's just a matter of how risk taking the client is. That's an initial judgment, but how do you set this up so you can actually leverage this data after? So what do you see on the left, or honestly just here? How is it set up? Category. Category per product. The more narrow you can get, the better. Why? Because all this keyword data that you have here on a per product, this is set up per product. I like to set up shoppings on a per product basis. So all this keyword data, uh, this is broken. Let me find something here. Here, All this keyword data that it's giving me on a per product basis, guess what I can do with it? Someone tell me what I can do with the a Castile Soap keyword product, which is just these. Search, inbound search. Yep. yep. Yep, inbound search. What else? YouTube, YouTube the funnel, display, 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 funnel with keyword everything, right? Yeah. Right now, exactly. Right now, I know for a fact that these two, I don't know, let's just go that these three ad groups are killing it, whatever, right? They're doing really well. And I know exactly what keywords work well for them. So let's say, I'll, like, these, whatever, crystal soap, pure crystal soap, peppermint oil, for some reason, I don't know, that doesn't have a conversion. I don't even organize. Sal suds. This stuff, it works, right? So I know for a fact, if I went into a search campaign and took, I don't know, that last 90 days worth of data, which is probably what I'll do with this, and launch it with these keywords that I know are converting at really good conversion rates, really good cost per convergence, how likely is it that that search campaign is going to succeed for me? Somebody? Go ahead, Glenn. Could I ask you to digress a little and go through the structure of those three campaigns yep. that you set up? Yep, I'm going to go through it right after this. Sure. So, um, this level of segmentation only makes sense if the budget allows so, right? No, it works regardless. I mean, if think of it this way, you had $100 a day, were you going to test all the products? Yeah. You have $100 a day, you split it up, are you testing all the products? No, only selected products, like the best of the best of the best. No, I would still test all of them, even if it's split out. Okay. Right. Because if it's a good product, it's still going to outperform. Like, look at this. What do you see here in terms of, I want you to look at two things. One, convergence, and how much I spent, I don't know, I guess, yes, spent. Where's my cost column? This column. So what do you see between these ad groups in terms of the products assume they're all singular products which they are by the way they're just one product and their variants the ones that are doing well are getting the budget that are getting attention the ones that google doesn't think it can sell or doesn't have the budget for yet they're not getting getting nothing it's spending majority of its budget here to get a 1.23 row as compared to toothpaste whatever let me start by cost uh, to like majority here compared to sugar soap, I don't even know what that is. Toothpaste, bar soap, hair cream, all that stuff, right? So if a product is gonna sell, it's gonna sell. You don't have to overthink it. You don't have to split it out into separate campaigns to be like, are they gonna sell or not? Mm -hmm. Sure, it might take longer if you have a million products, but if you have like twenty products, if it's gonna sell, it's gonna sell. It's it's just just give it the budget and time, mm -hmm. right? Okay. And Google will choose which one to which one it wants. Don't try to force your way into it. Let Google decide what it wants to sell, and it'll sell it better than you probably will be able to figure out, right? So, does that make sense in terms of the splits in this campaign? Yes. No. Yeah. Can I just yep. everyone? That makes sense. Okay. Sweet. Okay. So the split is this, and then we have cold traffic purely. In case nobody believed me. It's called, there's no brand term here. Here, I'll leave it so by clicks. I swear to God, if it's a brand term. Yeah, nothing. Or maybe there is one that popped up here. And just casually negative that while I'm here. But you guys see the point, right? Hey man, 
95% of it wasn't brand. Why am I doing br a phrase, by the way? Somebody explain that to me. It will cover right. all the variants of brand. Yes. Right. I don't want to sit here and every time someone types spell this one, then types whatever soap or type something of it after, I don't want to sit here and edit that. If I know that that's a variant that people misspell of the brand name, I'm going to put it as a phrase. So I don't have to worry about any of the other terms. I don't know if I put it in the right hit list, but there. So it was also called. So now the structure of these campaigns before we move on. Who's worked with this structure so far? This was I've tried it, and but it has only worked a few times. Sometimes the keywords just don't just like sniff out between, like for yeah. example, brand so, goes into a funnel and vice versa. Yep. Yeah. So the reason the keywords sniff out is because you don't have enough budget. So the way it works is this is your first campaign, which is high priority, mm -hmm. right? Wait, before I go in depth of it, does everyone else know how the structure works? Just raise your hand if you've never worked with this structure so I know how in depth to go. So can I just, Fazan has on. Vivek, have you? Okay. I work on this structure. Okay. Gaurav has not Abbas, what about you? Hello. Uh, Hello. I've worked on this uh, maybe last eight months back. Okay. So the structure is actually pretty simple, guys. Um, the thought process is to split cold traffic and brand traffic because if Google likes a keyword, whether it be shop, whether it be search, it will start prioritizing that keyword. So when I go into this campaign, what you'll see is, uh, yeah, come on. Pretty much old brand. Everyone see that, right? Yes. <clears throat> Pretty much old brand. How did the structure work? It's uh, a lot simpler than you think. You have three campaigns, one, two, three, in this order, right? So this first campaign here is the catch-all campaign, which captures every keyword known to man or people for whatever Google wants to pop up for these, right? But what we do is we exclude brand terms from it. So anything that's brand related, we negate it out and we set this to high priority. So Google will see this campaign first before it looks at any of the other campaigns. Does that make sense? So it's high priority. Google sees this campaign first before it moves on to other campaigns, right? So all our cold traffic, no brand shows up here. So what do we do with the brand? We put the brand in a second campaign, which is a lower setting a lower priority level so that one is high priority so this one gets preference this one is low priority so this one gets looked at after what does that mean someone searches castile soap it's showing up in that campaign someone searches brand name google's going to see it's negated out in our top of funnel campaign let's push it on to the next campaign in terms of the priority level so it goes down the funnel like that that's how it nitpicks at it that's how i get purely brand terms here so now a lot of the time what happens is non-brand terms leak into it so there's no way to completely stop that from happening there's ways to control it and decrease it one of the ways we do that is what i like to call the wall campaign which is essentially your products set at one cent cpcs for at medium priority so the reason majority of the times keyword leak out is when you don't have enough budget. Google will spend your $600 budget and then it'll go to the next campaign in the priority level. So let's say this is high priority. It goes to the next campaign and it runs out of budget. It goes to the next campaign, which will be this campaign, which is medium priority. And that'll start spending money here and bidding whatever you set to it. But if you set the bid really low to like one cent, Google will go in to the auction with one cent bids if it wins, it wins, I get a one cent click. If it doesn't, I lose nothing, right? And then the brand is still protected. So we kind of filter out a very large amount. This campaign always looks amazing, by the way, go to one second, and that's 150. So it's not meant to get you converted. It's not meant to grow your account. It's just meant to act as a barrier between your cold terms and your brand terms. Does that make sense? Hey, yeah. I have a question. Um, what's the difference between these and a middle of the funnel campaign? 
we don't have a middle funnel campaign right now. This is purely cold. But what would be the and... difference in terms of setup? So what this have you excluded from top of the funnel wall, like SKUs and brand? Yeah, this one. Yep, SKUs and brand. Got it. Same thing I've excluded here. Um, for middle of funnel, that would be different. That's a different setup. This is like for a per brand basis. Like mm -hmm. you own a singular brand. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Right. That's a different setup. It would work in the sense uh, that would go. We'll, we'll save that for next week, Dean. I'll tell you okay, what that is. Okay, let's do that. Thank you. Right. So does Gaurav, you have your hand up before I move on? I don't know if it was still up. Dun, dun, dun. Am I frozen? Everybody, the cameras on. Yeah, we can see you. Oh, uh, I can't see anybody. So I was like, wait, what happened? Anyways, that's the do, shopping set. Do you check yeah, your product titles before uh, running the standard shopping? Like, what are your titles? No, so, nothing. what about the like, search terms? Like, yeah. These haven't been changed. This was initially basically what they had set up. What I do do is once I have enough data, I would wait till 90 days worth of data. I'll go into keywords and go on a per group level, do this, take my keyword list, put it in a word cloud and see what keyword pops up the most and add those to my title that convert well. So if I see whatever the heck this is converts really well for me and it's working in bar soap, I would include it in the title. But I wait for the data to populate. I don't play a guessing game. Good. Like I know, I know it's. How, smart. Sorry, yeah, go ahead. So how do you negate in terms of like how do you analyze like cost or does the conversions or something else? I, it's it's a lot simpler than you think. Let's just look at I don't know. Let's assume let's just assume all this data is for one product, right? So it'd be organized by conversions. And then I randomly choose a ROAS value that I like for this list just because they're like very low price point product. Like it'll be like 20, 30 bucks. I'm just going to go with like a 1.5. And then these are my keywords I'm working with. So I'll look at natural toothpaste. Cool. That works well. Moreland toothpaste. That's a unique term that I haven't thought of or I haven't used or seen anywhere. Right. Organic body wash seems to be working well for them. It's converting at whatever, $6, right? So I'd look at stuff like this and then choose the keywords I want and put it in there. Does that make sense? So there's not an exact science if that's what you're looking for. About us, you following? Hello? I'm gonna assume, yeah. But yeah. And I would also start incorporating these into, what do you call it, the descriptions. I would re-edit the descriptions like I did recently for the bigger client I have. I basically took all the data here, um, filtered out the keywords I wanted, filtered out the whatever thresholds I wanted. And I went to chat GPT and I'm like, here's the keyword data. Here's the product. Write me a product description and product title for Google. Let it analyze and title. You can sit here and analyze, or you can let it analyze and do it. Right? So use the tools you have. And then I sent it to the client, which I'm still waiting on approval for. But basically that simple as that. So everyone followed that. And yes. so laughing at me for using chat GPT. Um everybody what? followed that. Go ahead, Abhishek. Yeah. What would you do if, let's say, you are not getting any conversions from standard shopping or, let's say, from this structure, and you are also not getting the right search terms in the standard shopping? So Then you actually need to do title optimizations, redo your description, redo your liner. Majority of the time, Google takes from your landing page more than it takes from your description and vice versa. but well, not white person. It takes information from your landing page and description as long as it's like semi on par with what the product actually is, then it's so, fine. Yeah, I just have this example. Like in, we changed mm -hmm. all of our descriptions. They also had you know good 
we changed all of our titles we also had good you know product page description but after okay. that the standard shopping campaign was not picking the search terms like you know ads uh sun sunglasses heads for uh no stats you know kind of those search terms it was just picking like baseball caps those kind of search terms so so when so what you're saying is you want to focus on very particular search yeah. terms you could do that too with this honestly with the setup like is tos you know makes the difference or like because i guess we were running the campaign you know how we're doing it with yeah we, we are the first campaign that's yeah. like the catch all with all the bad terms and then we're yeah. filtering out the terms we actually want and bidding on those instead but you know those second. campaigns these campaigns also like in the last 7 days those campaigns also are just spending we are, but we are not getting any conversions from the standard shopping i mean it's better to get spend on relevant terms and not convert than to waste money on bad terms and not convert if you're spending on relevant terms and not converting then it's time to go reassess your website reassess your product yeah right cuz you can send relevant traffic you can't convert mm -hmm. someone i can send glen to i don't know if glen's looking for hot cheetos i can get glen to click on a hot cheeto link right but the website itself where people actually want to want to buy the product right like glenn's got to actually want to buy the hot cheetos from abhishek's website right? and you, you are not running any pmax campaign with this structure no right? not here so so will you consider attribution problem here as well like if you'll check your mm -hmm. cms what what's selling out there mm -hmm. but this is too small of a budget right now for me to attribute attribute anything to attribution right now but that's a whole discussion we can do another day right now we're just talking structures and setups so does everybody follow this yep. yeah yeah okay what's up guys how's it going it's been a while this is literally like a camp four of us trying to record our intro properly and we failed each time so fourth times the charm anyways we're back with our videos that you might find useful you might not find useful but we'll see 